It's good to see you. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And this is the weekend of October 18th. Now, if you watch my show through the weekdays, you know what I like to do. I like to share hot penny stocks with you I found through my trading day. I trade penny stocks every single day from bell to bell. Literally, I'm not exaggerating here, folks. I trade stocks under five bucks. And you know where I find them? Everywhere. They're on every single market. There's no lack of penny stocks. But I'm always looking for a hot penny stock, a stock that has potential to make us money. And these are the ones I like to share with you. But on the weekends, I've been doing something different. I've been sharing some of my own personal trading insights with you. How I make the most out of all of my trades. How I find hot charts. How I protect myself from losing too much money. And I've got videos out there for all of those. So please check them out. Today, I want to share with you how I find my supports and resistances. Now, I did make a video two months ago on supports and resistances. But this one was on how to use them. Supports and resistances are the most critical aspect to any trade, especially your short trades. Supports and resistances give us the information we need to set up and plan our trade before we get into it. We know what price we're buying our stock at. We know what price we're going to sell our stock at if things go good. We know when we're getting out and we know what price to sell at if things go bad. This is our emergency exit, our stop loss. If the stock starts to drop, we don't rely on hope and wishes. We just get the heck out and we take a small loss. And then we come back in and make another trade. As long as you're winning, more often than you're losing, those little losses are not going to hurt your profit margin. I assure you. So whenever I look at a chart, the very first thing I do is to put my supports and resistances in there. Now, what exactly is a support and resistance? It's where the price changes direction on the chart. Imagine the $3 mark. Price is coming up to $3. It hits it and stops and falls. Comes up again, goes through it just a little bit, turns around and falls. Then it finally gets through, climbs up, comes back down, hits that $3 and bounces up. Comes back down, goes under it just a little bit and then bounces back up. Well, there's something very pertinent about that $3 mark. She likes to change directions on it. So we're going to use that to our advantage. So we're going to draw a line on that $3 mark. We know she likes to slow down underneath it. She likes to speed up over top. This is where we're going to get in. Over top of those supports is where we enter. Underneath the next one is where we get out. Now I need to tell you a few things about supports and resistances. Put these in concrete. First off, once we draw a support and resistance, it will never change. That support and resistance will be there forever and ever and ever and ever. So they never move. You don't ever have to update your supports and resistances. As time goes on, the chart will be creating new ones. So we may add some SNRs, but we are never going to take any away. Next thing you need to know, we never ever do anything on the support and resistance. If it's at $3, never buy a stock at $3. Never sell at $3. You're going to buy at like $3.05. You're going to sell at like $2.95. There's a cushion on each side of that line. Think of the lines as the bread and you only want the meat in the middle. So don't do anything on the lines. So I look at a lot of charts every single day. I'm over at Penny Boys trading with anybody and everybody that shows up on our free members page. I got a link down below. It says this is the Penny Boys link. Real easy to find. Click that. It'll bring you over to Discord. If you haven't got an account with Discord yet, you're going to have to give them your email, choose a username and a password, and voila, you're in. And it'll direct you to our site, Penny Boys. When you get there, Look on the left-hand side, you'll see a menu. You'll see free members page there. Click it, come on in. That's where I'm at, trading with anybody and everybody who's there. I go out, find charts. People bring me charts. We get supports and resistances on them. That's what I do. I draw these things up all day and I bring the chart back in so that people can see where they need to get in and get out. And I do this very quickly, but without rhyme and reason. I don't have a set A, B, C, D that I do. I just look at the charts and I see the lines. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is that they are good on all time frames. One minute, five minute, hour, all of them. 
I normally find my strongest SNRs on the one hour and the four hour, but you're going to find very strong SNRs on your shorter time frames as well. So you're going to find these anywhere. I initially look on the stronger charts first, meaning the one hour and the four hour, because those bars have a lot of data in them. So any support and resistance I find with those bars is probably the stronger ones. When you come down to the shorter time frames, your five minute, your one minute, you're going to find softer ones in between. And this is what we do. We look for them as we can find them. So let's presume I'm over at Penny Boys and somebody says, Wizard, can you get me some SNRs, some supports and resistances for ticker BSGM? Absolutely. I am on that right now. Now that person is waiting to make a trade and they can't get into that trade until they know what their entries and their exits are. Can't do that without supports and resistances and he's waiting on me. So I can't dilly dally. I got to get these in a hurry, but I want them to be accurate. Now here's the great part about this folks. Supports and resistances do not have to be exact. We don't have to find the precise place they need to be. We just need to be in the right zone, the right area, because we are trading on a buffer zone. Remember, we are never getting in and never getting out on the supports. If it's at $3, we're not going to buy or sell at $3. If we get into the stock, we might get in five cents over, $3.05. If we're going to sell at that resistance, we're going to sell at $2.95, a nickel on each side of it, a little bit of buffer zone. So as long as your supports and resistances are in the right vicinity, they're going to be good enough for what we're doing, folks. Now, the first thing I'm going to do when I look at a chart is to look at all the charts. I want to know what I'm dealing with so that I can approach it the right way. I don't have any rhyme and reason whether I start on the little charts or the big charts. I draw the lines wherever I see them. And that's most important, folks. You're the one looking at the chart. How do you see them? You can squeeze your charts and you can move them around a little bit. I'll show you what I'm talking about. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come look at the charts the way they see them. They're looking at a one minute, five minute. I want to see if it's a decent stock to trade. If it's not, I'm going to give them my opinion and let them know. This one's looking good. BSGM is climbing. We've got a high bubble she's tagging here, but we've got no prices above her. So I can't get any supports and resistances. So I've got to find some prices above her to do this. So we're going to go back to the 30 minute. Nope. We've got nothing here. How about the one hour? I still have no prices above me, no S and R's. So I'm going to have to go all the way back to my four hour chart. Now you could use a one hour chart that goes back six months or a year. You can absolutely do that. But in either case, we've got to get a lot more time in these charts to see what's going on. Now I see the picture. I see our prices down here at a breakout point on the 200. Definitely want to get some trade information now. This is probably going to jump over that and start to run. So you need to know where our supports and resistances are. Well, we've got two options here to get them. We can either get them from this big drop. Any big drop or any big surge can give you supports and resistances. I'll show you that in a minute. Or we can use all of this back here. Both of them can be used at the same time if you want. So let me show you how you get them off of a big drop or a big pop. Now we could come in here with our supports and resistances and draw them on the tops of these bars. You see I'm sitting right on top of there. Or you could come underneath on the bottom of the bar. You can do that. But these aren't real great. They're a little iffy. So I normally do not get my supports and resistances from big drops and pops like that. I like to use my Fibonacci tool. Let me show you what the Fibonacci does and I'll explain kind of how it works. The Fibonacci uses magic numbers. And what we do is we find a big drop or a big pop and go to the very top of that big move and tag it. Then come to the very bottom of that big move and tag it. What you've got here are these white lines. These are supports and resistances based on algorithmic supports and resistances. That is to say they are not attached to any historical price point, yet they're valid. We can use these to trade on. The price is going to respect them because they're based on magic Fibonacci numbers. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, Fibonacci is a science. 
yet we have no scientific evidence to back up why Fibonacci numbers work. What are Fibonacci numbers? Fibonacci numbers are taking two numbers in sequence, adding them up to create the next number in sequence. Starting with one, we would have one and two. Add those together, that gives you your next number, three. Add the last two numbers, three and two, that gives you five. Five and three gives you eight. Eight and five gives you 13. 13 and eight gives you 21. And it just keeps going on like that. Now, what good are these numbers for? Well, I can't tell you exactly how they work. Nobody can, but we can tell you where we see them. They pop up in nature and creation all over the place. A hurricane, that spiral effect that is created based on the Fibonacci science. Galaxies are created with that same spiral effect used in Fibonacci. Your toilet bowl water, the way it goes down the toilet, that's Fibonacci. A lot of our shells in the ocean, same thing. But it doesn't just work on spiral, it works on a lot of different things. Back in the 1800s, they used the Fibonacci math to help cure an overpopulation and breakout of rabbits. I don't know how they did it. In the early 1900s, they used Fibonacci to determine how many bees were going to be born so many generations down the line. Again, I don't know how they do this. I don't know how it works. Nobody knows how it works. We just know it does. It's called empirical evidence. We can witness it happening. We just can't explain why it happens. Well, somewhere along the line, somebody decided to introduce Fibonacci into the market, into finances to see if it works. And it does. <laughs> so I can't tell you why. I can just tell you that you can use it. Now, what you'll notice is with the Fibonacci, the bottom spread is really big and the top spread is really big. So you normally find more SNRs inside there. You just got to look. We can see one here real easy, right down there in the center, right there, right? Everything right here is sitting on top of that yellow line. And over here, it's all bumping its head. So we've definitely got one there. Now, if you don't have any prices in here to work with, and you know that's just a huge gap, you can normally just throw a line right down the center, split this in half, and normally that is a soft resistance that will be respected. So this can give you your SNRs right there. If you don't want to use that, or it's not feasible to use that, let me show you what else we can do. So we've got all these prices over here that we can use. And I see a bunch of them right off the top of my head. I told you that supports and resistances happen wherever the price changes direction and bounces. Well, we see a bounce right there. No doubt she bounced there. So we're going to underline that one. We've got another one right here. We got lots of bounces. It's bouncing there. It's bouncing here. It's bouncing there. Over here, she's hitting her head on it perfectly. I didn't even look over there. Just lined up. Now, we don't just underline, you can go over lines too. Find something on the top. Now, this covers both. This is bouncing on the top and it's hitting its head underneath. And over here, we don't see anything, but it's going to come into play for us. Now, that looks like a pretty wide spread to me here, folks. So, what I'm going to do is zoom in on this area and I'm going to try to get another support and resistance because that just looks a little wide to me. Yes, we've got one right there in the center, right? You can see right here she tagged, right here she's hitting her head, and here she bounced. So we do have another one right there. Let's back this up and just keep going up. Uh, I'm getting there, folks. We definitely got another one here at the top. Everything hit her head right there. And look, I didn't even see that, but she bounced right there as well. Then we've got one up here, up in this area right there. Everything is bouncing bouncing, bouncing. We got one across the top right there. Look for your wicks. Wicks will normally give you a clue that she's probably got a, a support in that area. And you can draw these as far as you want. I like to draw lots of them so I don't have to come back and do it later. And as I said, these are never going to change. So we don't have to come back and adjust these later. These are always going to be here. Now there's another widespread one. So I would normally put one on top of one of these wicks. You see that wick there and that wick there? I'd normally just throw one right in between the two of those right there. 
So now when we come back over to our five minute chart, we have got all these supports and resistances. I can see that's a big spread. These are our plays folks from one yellow line, support and resistance to the next one. That is our play. We're not worried about how far it's going to go. We never ask that question. So we are looking at this play. We're going to get in somewhere around here, just above the support and resistance, and we're going to get out somewhere up there. A little bit underneath, a little bit over. We're taking the meat in the middle and leaving the bread alone. Now it looks to me like we got another support and resistance, a soft one right there. The price was all sitting on top of it right there. So these are our plays. So right here is going to be an entrance. Right there is going to be an entrance over top of each one of these. So if this price is moving really fast, don't try to get into the next one. You, it may pass you while you're putting in your order and you missed it. So now you got to try to get into the next one. What I like to do is if this is moving fast, I skip the next gap and I jump up to this one here. I get my trade all set. I find my entry. I find my exit, which is going to be underneath this support. And I find my stop loss. My stop loss is going to be underneath the same support that my entry is over top of. Going to be a nickel over it and a nickel under it. Something like that. I want those three prices. My entry, my good exit, and my bad exit. I have them all set and ready to go as soon as that price starts to climb over me. A green bar that closes on or over my price I am in and I'm going to ride that up. If she continues going, I'm going to sell 75% here and let the other 25% run to the next target. Now, do not talk yourself out of getting paid on payday, folks. Whenever you approach a target in that gap that you're in, always, always, always sell something. Never pass up a payday. Sell 75% at the first payday. Take 25% to your next target. Now, if you think you're losing money doing that because you just sold 75% and you've only got 25% left, would you believe in most cases that 25% will make you as much, if not more, than the first 75% that you sold. Because you've got a much bigger profit margin, you're covering two gaps here, and in a lot of cases, the next gap is a bigger gap than the first one. So you have a bigger profit margin in there. So not only do you get paid once, you get paid twice and make more money than if you sold it all at the first one, or tried to carry it all to the second one. And that's what we never ever want to do. Do not take all that you've purchased past a payday to the next one. You could end up getting bumped and dropped so fast that you lose all of your money. So take your paydays, folks. That is the most important thing I can tell you. So this gives us our supports and resistances. We can plan our trades all day using these. And when she comes back down and bounces on one, we can make that same play all over again. Let's take a look at another one. So we're looking at ticker VTAK. This is a stock we actually traded over at Penny Boys on Friday early in the morning when she was hot. She was catching a lot of attention from Thursday. She bounced at the end of the day, right at the bell. She went from 40 cents up to a dollar, just like that. And then pre-market on Friday, we saw her jump from 60 cents up to a buck 40, just like that. Then she pulled back just a little bit, 20 cents, came down to her nine day SMA, looked like she was ready to continue climbing. At the bell, she did just that. She jumped another 55 cents, hitting a high of a buck 74. Now, we did get some trades out of this before she fell away, and my chart was congested with supports and resistances, but I've erased all of them so I can show you how I found them and how you can find them. Now, because we did have a gap here, we can use our Fibonacci. The Fibonacci is great, folks. Use it as often as you can. Always start at the top of your surge or the top of your drop. It doesn't matter which. Poke the top, then come down to the bottom. Now, we could come to the bottom of this one, which happened pre-market on Friday, or we could come down to the bottom of this one, which happened after market Thursday. Either one is going to work for you, folks. Neither one is wrong. Me, I'm going to stick to this one over here just because. Now, what I've got here are supports and resistances we can use right now. I don't have to go back an hour, four hours, or anything like that to find any price points. We've got them. 
So I can take a picture of this chart immediately and put it up on Penny Boy's Discord so people can get an idea of where they're entering and where they're exiting. Just over top of these supports and just underneath them. Got lots of different trades there. While they're doing that though, I have to consider the fact that this stock may run. It may just keep going up and up. So I've got to get supports and resistances above this $1.74. So let us go back. Let's take a look at the hour. I've got no information there. Absolutely none. What about my four hour? Oh yeah, we got lots of information here, folks. So I can get lots of supports and resistances over our price here of a buck 78. Now, the first thing I notice is we have got a big drop right there. Look at that drop. She fell from a buck 60 all the way down here and laid flat and now she's coming back around and we do have a very strong support and resistance at the top of any fall where a jump starts or a fall starts that is always a strong support and resistance right there and that is right about the same zone that our price jumped up to right about a buck 75 somewhere in there falling back down to our nine day ma on top of our 200 day ma this looks like it's ready to break out I'd be watching this on Monday. Now, again, because we have a gap here, we could put supports and resistances using our Fibonacci. I could get rid of this one. Let's take that one away and we'll put one in here. Both of them are good. Don't get confused, folks. You can use any of these Fibonacci's. Poke that top bar, that strong support. Come on down to the bottom of the run. Now we've got a run here. You can see these red bars right there are all straight. I could put it right there or I could come down to the bottom of these prices. You see how that's sitting flat. Everything is on top of my line right now. Or I can come to this low bubble right there. I'm going to come down to that low bubble just so I don't have to make any changes later. So now we've got supports and resistances based on this big gap right there. But again, we're in the same boat. I don't have any supports and resistances above our high right here. And if this stock starts to run, I'm going to need them. So we just start working our way down the chart. We're looking for things that are easy to see. If you need to squeeze the chart together to see that flat line, then do it. I can definitely see we have one right there. Now we've already got supports and resistances in here. So I really don't need these. I'm just showing you that you can see things easier if you move your charts around. So I need to get above a buck 76. I definitely see we've got one right here. All of this bounced right there. We locked up on it. You can see we're hitting our head on it here and that bar right there hit her head on it. We've got another one right here. They're not real strong, but you can see she was bouncing in there. Then we've got another one. I'm going to go at the top here. This all came down. It's bouncing on it. Yeah, a couple of them come underneath, but over here we're banging our head on it. So we are in the right zone. They don't have to be perfect, folks. You just need them in the right vicinities because we're going to be buying in and selling out on the buffer, right? A nickel over, a nickel under. Got another one on the top right there. You can see this bar bounced on it. This bar bounced on it. And this is where she started to break away. Another one right there. You can see everything was sitting on top of that, but that's a little big. So I'm going to take that wick right there, folks, and I'm going to throw one right across the top of that wick. You find wicks are supports and resistances because people notice them and that's what makes them strong. Got another one right there. You can see everything is bouncing and flat-headed right there. And right there, that big red bar is flat-headed. So now I have gone from $1.78 all the way up to $6.50. Let's go on back to our five-day, five-minute. There was that extra one I threw in. You can see it actually is a support and resistance here. She is bouncing on that a lot. So I'm going to leave that one, even though it's close. Now, you do not have to play every single one. If you see a real thin gap, skip that one. Wait until you get the big gap. This is small. That's medium. That's a big one. If the stock has a lot of volume, and that's what we're always looking for, a lot of volume, and you see she's climbing, she's coming through these smaller ones, be patient. Set a trap for the price. Don't chase 
the prey. Let the prey come to you. So I'm going to get up here on this big one, not the little one, not the medium one. And I'm going to put my buy in right about there. And I'm going to put my sell in right about there. And I'm going to put my stop loss. Well, here's our bounces. I don't want that bounce there. So I'm going to come a little under right there. So there's my play folks right in that region right there. My stop loss, the support, my entry, my exit. Between the two, I've got a dollar eighty-one to a dollar uh, two twenty-one. Oh my God! Wow, that is a four hundred dollar play if you buy a thousand shares. It's a two hundred dollar play if you only buy five hundred shares. Now you could have gotten in down here and played this smaller one or that little one. That's okay. But the fact is some people only have so many trades in a day. They've got margins and they can only do three in a week. So they are very particular about how they use their day trades. You wouldn't want to use it on a small trade like that. You'd want to use it on a big trade like that. Making money is the objective, but it is not the primary goal. Saving your money, keeping your money, not losing your money. That's your number one priority. Making money is your objective. You're a soldier. Your objective is to eliminate the enemy, but your primary goal is to stay alive. Don't get hurt. You get hurt or killed, you can't meet your objective. You lose your money, you can't trade tomorrow. Number one primary is saving your money. Don't lose it. Second is making money. Don't get those two confused, folks. So you see what we're doing here. We've got prices all day that we're going to be able to work with and these will never move. You don't have to come over here and adjust them. People don't have to ask me once they realize where they're getting in, always over the top of a support and resistance and we always sell underneath and we never miss a sale. We don't choose to miss one and get greedy going to the next one. Don't do that. I'm telling you folks, that's the loser's game. Get in there, take your payday at 75%, take 25% to the next target, your next payday. If it looks like it's still going to run, sell half of what you have left, 12%, you know, half of your 25% and take the next little bit of shares you have to the next point and then finally sell them all. It's never an all or nothing decision, folks. You don't have to sell nothing. And you don't have to sell everything. You can sell some, you can buy some, scale in, scale out. That is what professionals do. All right, let's take a look at one more chart. So we're going to take a look at ticker HEPS now. We have not traded this one before, but I've chosen her for a particular reason. She is near all time highs right now. I have very little ceiling left to get data from, to get our supports and resistances. And once she goes into all time highs, we're not going to have any prices above us. We're not going to have any data or information to get supports and resistances. So how are we going to know where to enter? How are we going to know when to exit? This sounds awfully risky to me. How do we play stocks that just keep running into all time high territories? Well, I've gotten a bit creative here and I do have a solution I want to share with you. So looking at HEPS on the five minute chart, we see we've hit a high here of $4.71. Let's get a support and resistance up there. And I'm going to let that go all the way across the board. Now, this is a gap so we can get supports and resistances for the current price area. We'll grab those up right now, hitting the top right on top of that bar right there and coming down to the bottom. Voila, we've got ourselves some supports and resistances. And the stock is in a good place right now. Our 50% mark, the halfway point. We don't want to see the price come below that because she has a tendency to want to keep falling. Once she gets to the 50, she has a tendency to want to start climbing. She is right there at the 50 right now. Now, if she starts going higher, what am I going to do for supports and resistances? Well, let's go back to an hour and see what I've got. I've got nothing to use. How about on the yearly? Nothing there. How about two years? I got nothing folks. Last thing I got on my chart is three years, one week chart. So here we are. There's our high at $4 and 71 cents. And we've got just a couple bars here 
And each one of those bars has an entire week of trading in it. So I really can't use these to find my supports and resistances. What do I do? Well, how about copycatting? We've got one right here. So let's take this. I'm going to draw another one here. I'm going to draw the exact same one right there. And then I'm going to move it. I'm going to shuffle this up to the top right up to there and just pick up where this one left off. So now I've got supports and resistances that are going to be close. We've already done this. We have tried this many times over at Penny Boys because people needed supports and resistances. And I hate saying I can't help you. Now, I don't know of anybody else who does this. I haven't read of this being done. I don't know if it's even proper. But this is what I have been doing for the last month when we are at all time highs and I have no data or information. I just copycat a jump down at the bottom somewhere and drag that one up to the top and just lay it on the top and start working with those. And to be honest, they've been working. We did this with drug ticker D R U G. I found her at $2 and 38 cents. And in one day, during the day from bell to bell, she went up to $34. She was so far beyond her norm, we had no supports and resistances and I had to keep creating them. And these resistances were getting bigger and bigger. And she was jumping from like $24 to $30, boink, one move. And our supports and resistances were working. They were working. So I do do this. It has been tried, it has been tested, it has been successful. So I would offer it up as a solution when you're dealing with stocks that have no more prices above where they're at and they're at all time highs, just copycat one from underneath and drag it up to the top. Now folks, the best way to learn how to do this is just to keep bringing up charts and doing it. Just do it over and over and over again. I do lots and lots of charts every single day. I do a thousand charts a month probably. You probably aren't going to do that many, but the more you do, the easier it gets, especially when you realize we're just drawing straight lines across the butts and the ends of the bars and the wicks. And when you adjust your chart, you'll find your eyes get accustomed to a certain squeeze. It's like, whoa, I see it right there. But when you spread it out too far, it's just not too easy to see. So practice makes perfect. And I hope this video helps you. I know I could have gone into a lot more, but hey, the video is long enough, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks for your time, all of it. Hopefully I did share something with you that's going to help. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you folks.